Okay, let's look at example 7.4. Path independence. That's an important little phrase there. Path independence of change in potential energy. Okay, so um, remember that we saw in the previous video that your potential energy is only a function of your position. Okay, and so now we'll see here that there's an, another characteristic of potential energy is that it's path independent. Meaning, let me try to make up an example here. Say now you take a box, okay, and you want to lift it to the shelf. Say there's a shelf there. Okay. <coughs> Now, I know we haven't covered potential energy yet, but what just conceptually, what you need to see is that if you pick up the box and you do this, and then you lower it down, and you pick it up again, and then you sit down and you have a cup of coffee, okay, some bean there coffee, and then you go here, and then you go for a walk, and then you come back, and then you put, it, you put the box on the shelf, okay? Or, let's take another color. Or, what color do you want? Um, how about a yellow? Or, you simply put the box over there. You simply do that. The potential energy, the delta, delta U. Let's go back to a nice color. Delta U. Delta U is the same for both of them. It is path independent. It's independent of the path that you take to get there. So now let's look at this example here. With Remember that there's two types of potential energy we can consider. The one is due to the spring, a spring, and the one is due to gravity. So we haven't gotten to gravity yet, so I've been giving you these gravity examples. So now let's consider these, these two things to see this matter of path independence. Here we have a cart. It collides with the spring um, at x1, as you can see, at x, it's x1, and it moves to x2. So it compresses it a little bit. That's, that's scenario A. Scenario B is it collides with a spring at x1. Okay? I'm not sure where it's measuring it from. It's measuring it from the left here. Okay. So that looks to me like x1. And so there's x1. And there's x2, okay? So in this scenario 2, it collides, it compresses all the way to x3, and then it starts to restore. It starts to expand again until it's at x2. So oh, I hope we're getting what's happening here. In this one, it simply moves from x1 to x2. In this one, it compresses it completely, and then it moves back until it's at x2. So this one started at x1 and finished at x2. This one started at x1 and finished at x2. Do you see the, the similarity? They both had the same starting and end points, but this one had a different, what? Path. It had a different path to get to x2. Remember here, I showed you two different paths. There was another path two paths to get from, from there to there. In the same way, we had two paths. This one from there to there. This one from there back to there. Okay? Now we want to see, <coughs> we want to compare the change in the potential energy in the spring. Okay. So let's consider this example, uh, this part A. And so it says U, uh, sorry, delta U of path A is, how do you calculate a delta? It's the final minus the initial, okay? So it's going to be potential energy of 2 minus potential energy at 1, all right? Final minus initial. Then let's look at this one. We want to measure the, the change in potential energy between x1 and x2. And so we can break this up into two uh, stages, I guess, you could say. We can look at measure the p or look at the potential energy between x1 and x3 because it, f it moves from x1 to, to x3 and then back to x2. So that would be 
x final minus, uh, sorry, put, uh, u final minus u initial. Okay, so that would be the potential energy at x3 final minus potential energy at 1. Okay, so we've got u of x3 minus u of x1. And then we can measure the change in potential energy from x3 to x2. That would be again final minus initial, which is 2 minus 3. So u of x2 final minus u of x3. Okay, so all we've done is we've broken it up into its in a, into its uh, stages of its path from x1 to x3 and x3 to x2. Okay, so now if we uh, if we add this all up, we'll see we have u x3. Let's re let's write this out. U of x3 minus u of x1 plus u of x2 minus u of x3. So you can see u of x3 u minus u of x3, gone. And so what do you have here? You have u of x2 minus u of x1. u of x2 minus u of x1, which is exactly what we get for this one. So we can see that for p potential energy, we have path independence. Okay.